This is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. Today I have a special treat for you. What we're going to do today is we're going to talk about one of my favorite fruits. The mango. And here it is right here. Now this is a special mango. This is the uh, California green mango. So if you go to the grocery store, many mangoes that you go to and get in the grocery store, if they're green, they're not ripe. But this variety, the California green mango, also known as the Keat mango, K-E-I-T-T, can actually be ripe when it is green. Uh, that being said, I do like to see some color on them sometimes. Let's see here, I got a good example. This is kind of turning a little bit uh, yellowish. Here's one here that has some yellow spotting on it. But nonetheless, this is a California green mango. It's grown in California, so it's not hot water dipped. All mangoes that are imported from outside the United States, including Brazil, Peru, Mexico, they're basically hot water treated at temperatures hotter than 118 degrees for short periods of time. So they may not be considered raw by some people. So when you are picking regular imported mangoes at the store, you actually want to get them a little bit soft um, on the softer side because they're going to be ripe. And if they're too hard, I find that they generally don't ripen up after they've been hot water treated or if they're picked too early, which many of them are. So the California mangoes are special because they're in season at a certain time of the year and we maybe have a, another week or two left if you can still find these. They basically come and they're on their way out right now. These aren't hot water dips and when you pick these, you need to actually pick them a little bit firmer than you would pick the imported mangoes. If you pick these as soft as you'd pick the imported mangoes to get them to taste good, these ones will actually be fermented. Now I, I really find that the imported ones, while they do ferment, they don't ferment as often as these guys if you get these soft because once again, these aren't hot water dipped and they're picked more ripe than the ones that have to be imported you know, and shipped up to the United States. In any case, mangoes are definitely a really delicious fruit, the high in vitamin C, vitamin A. They also have polyphenols and rich in antioxidants. They're just so good for us. The other thing that you might want to remember is that the mango is related to the uh, cashew tree, also distant cousins to like poison oak. So, you know, the ones that make you really itch. So that being said, you know, the sap that comes out of the tree if you were breaking a branch or when you get the fruit off, that sap can actually be quite caustic. And actually, some of those properties can be, especially in the unripe green skin and possibly the unripe fruit. So I only recommend you eat them as ripe as possible. Some people, if you eat too many mangoes or you're very sensitive, you can get things like contact dermatitis. You'll get inflamed and red skin. The other thing you can happen if you get a lot of the mango juice on you that also may have the uh, irritant properties, you can get what's called angular chilitis. And what that is, is like you get these cracks right where the top and bottom lip meets. And then if you get juice in there, it kind of like burns because it's like exposed the skin. So uh, you don't want to do that. So what I'm going to show you today is two ways to open the mango. The first way is the way I used to do it. And the second way is the way that I do it now to basically eat them without getting any juice and getting it all over. Plus getting as much fruit out as possible because we don't want to waste these things. Uh, organic mangoes such as this can run up to five dollars each the california mangoes they are available at certain whole food stores these are actually the u.s or california grown non-organic mangoes if you're lucky to live in florida then of course you can get the mangoes from florida and <laughs> not california so without further ado let's go ahead and show you how i open these up oh so the thing is i have a lot of hard ones and i find these ones unlike the imported mangoes they will ripen once you pick them so uh, these were sold by the each, so when we picked these out, and they were actually 75 cents each, an amazing deal for these, normally they cost more. Uh, when we pick these out, we want to just get the largest ones, and then we put them in a bag with two apples, a paper bag, sealed up the bag to let them ripen up, and slowly but surely they've been ripening. So I'm eating these for lunch today. And uh, here's some of the, the remnants of my mangoes that I've eaten already. But let's go ahead and open this guy up and show you how I open these up. First, the standard way on how I used to eat them, and then the new way on how to do it without getting juice all and dripping all over and, and staying neat. So for this technique, uh, basically you'll need a couple tools. Uh, number one, a nice sharp knife. I have a ceramic knife here, really sh super sharp, almost like a razor blade. And then uh, that's for technique number one. And then for my technique, I'm also going to need a fork because I'm not going to be uh, getting dripping juice everywhere. And then I also have an avocado, uh, basically, uh, slicer, which is really cool, without the tines in the middle. Most of these have the tines. This is a special kind I found without the tines. So let's see, the uh, standard way to do it 
you want to cut the mango down the seed because the seed pretty much looks like this it's nice and skinny and the orientation of the seed and the mango if you look at it is like this so it's sitting right in the middle like this so you could cut off two halves of the mango without hitting the seed so we're just going to take the knife here and uh, go by the stem end and then I'll just go pretty close to the stem and I'll just slowly cut down if I cut down and I feel something like the seed then I'll try to angle the blade out a little bit but I'm not so I'm just going to keep cutting down and as I'm cutting down I'm actually trying to focus the knife in to ride the um, the plane of the seed there and we're just going to go down really slowly and uh, let's see so you can see I, I cut pretty nicely against the seed this is the way you're going to get the most fruit out of it but you can see I did get some of the seed out you can't really eat the seed coating so we're going to go ahead and carefully uh, trim that piece off and now once you have the mango like this the uh, original way that I used to eat them is like this you take the knife and you push it all the way through but don't go through to the skin and just cut down all the way down and cut down and then come back up but once again don't cut through the skin and you're basically like scoring it so you're gonna score it one direction then you're gonna carefully score it the other direction So once you have it all cut and scored, then you're going to take your hands around the back side. And if I did, did do this right, this would stay uh, attached. And you basically just flip it out. And this would stay all attached. And you'd basically have a little thing like this. And then you could take it and eat it just like that. The problem with this is that you're going to get the juice and everything all over your lips, all over your face. Which you may be more prone to getting angler chelitis. Which means you won't be able to enjoy your mangoes as much because it will burn every time you eat them. So instead of doing it this way, what I'm going to show you is my new way to do it. So we're going to go ahead and put this one aside. So once again, we're going to take the uh, other half of the mango and we're going to cut down the other side of the seed. So we're going to go ahead and put this down and we're just going to cut along the other side of the seed once again right near the stem. Go straight down. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have to angle it out because I'm hitting the seed. Then we're going to kind of angle it in to angle down on the seed. So you can see I did a fairly good job. This is a really thin, skinny piece. We'll deal with that one in a second. But the next technique I do is I just take this scooper thing, and this actually has a nice blade on it. So you're going to take it, and what I do is I just uh, put it underneath and just scoop it out and just get a nice piece out. Then I'll come in with this, and I'll, go, I'll get this blade right between the, the mango flesh and the peel, so I... I'm assured to get all the mango out of here and won't lose any good fruit because man this stuff is oh so delicious once again these California keep mangoes they can taste as sweet as candy actually better than candy in my opinion so we're gonna go ahead and just get these pieces out in l nice large chunks as close to the skin as possible without taking any skin with it and you can see here this is a very effective tool to do just that so pretty much I've skinned most of the fruit out of the skin now. All right, I mean that's, that's pretty dry there, not too much fruit left. Now that we have all these pieces here, what I like to do is I like to once again take the knife and my fork. Once again, this is not caveman raw food style, this is a uh, nice and neat without dripping any juice and I'll just literally take this and I'll cut the mango up into pieces and once again I'll take and cut these into pieces as well and once I have those in pieces then I just use my fork very carefully and very nicely one piece at a time in the mouth with no juice getting all over and no need for wearing a towel because it's gonna drip everywhere mmm so on this one, now that I cut it this way, I could easily go back in with this tool. And once again, just use this tool to cut out. And actually, what's gonna, it's going to be kind of nice. It's going to actually cut out all the little pre-cut squares. So that's actually another way to, to do it if you did want to pre-cut it. But once again, I'm doing it this way so that I don't get the juice all over. 
You know, if you like doing caveman style raw food, you got a beard, for example, and you like to get food everywhere and get all grubby, you could do a caveman style, but you know, I'm not a caveman and I prefer to be a little more civilized and not get that juice everywhere, especially because I have had angler chelitis and once you've had it, you know, trust me, you don't want to get it again. It's not a fun thing to have. You can't enjoy your mangoes or actually many other fruits that are acidic because it literally just burns. So you can see here, I'm just easily scooping out all the nice mango here. One nice big pile. All right, so that's that's easy too. Got that all trimmed up. So next, let's deal with the center part. Here's once again the middle part that we didn't actually uh, do anything with. It still has some of the skin. And I just very carefully take the knife and I'll uh, cut, cut near the stem end and I'll hold the uh, fruit. And I'll just go in and carefully trim between the skin and the flesh of the fruit and just cut off only the skin that we don't eat. So I just move the knife down. So there you go, you can see I easily remove the skin. We'll put that in there for the compost pile. So we're left with this, which is the seed with some fruit on it. So I'll just carefully hold the fork on the seed and then I'll just take the knife at an angle and trim it down and I'll be able to easily get all the the fruit off now you could just stick this in your mouth and try to gnaw at it and get all this off but once again then you get the juice all over your lips and your mouth which may cause the angler chelitis <laughs> so uh, this is the uh, civilized way to not drip anywhere and this is the most efficient way that I found if you if you do have a more efficient way than the way I'm doing it please make a YouTube video and share it with me because I like to learn and grow and find the most efficient ways to do things. So far, this is the way I like to do it the best. So you can see we're really getting a lot of the fruit off of there. And the really interesting thing about the mango pit, let me go ahead and show you this real quick. You know, most people think this is the mango pit and the mango pit is inside here. But actually what many people don't know is that the, the seed is actually inside this protective covering. So if we look in here, you can see I cut through part of the protective covering, and if we peel this back, if I could do it, it's pretty hard. You could literally see I could peel this back. And now this is the mango seed. Oh, man, and check it out. This one's actually sprouting. So here's the, uh, wow, man, it's encased in this, like, paper stuff. That's a trip. But anyways, this is the mango seed, and you could see... There's a little tail on it, and we could plant this mango seed and have a new tree. So if you want to plant a mango seed, you would definitely take it out of the, uh, the skin here, and then you'd plant this. And, you know, in, if in the right conditions, you could plant this, and it probably would grow a tree. I'm not sure if mangoes are actually true to seed or not, so if you get the same variety mango or a hybrid variety. But definitely really cool. You can grow a mango tree in most parts of the U.S. inside uh it, mangoes don't like the cold weather so most parts of the country unless you live in South Florida or maybe uh, Southern California where it doesn't get too cold uh, you're not gonna be able to actually grow it for fruit you, but you could grow it as a nice decorate decorative indoor plant and say hey I got a mango tree in the house so hopefully you've enjoyed this episode learning more about the mangoes and how to eat them with getting without getting all the juice all over your face and I guess up next is I get to enjoy the rest of my lunch once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com, encouraging you to always eat a variety and a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables for the greatest health.